Greetings, Uncle Travelling Matt here, and I am reporting back uh, on the end of my first full day here in Italy uh, on my trip to uh, Turin and the surrounding area. Uh, so I'm going to be talking today about what I've been up to today, but also what happened yesterday. Yesterday wasn't particularly exciting because it mostly involved getting here. Um, so flew out from Stansted and... Um, in the in the middle of the afternoon we actually stayed the bit the night before in norwich went to Walsingham the day before so thanks to my friend paul for that and um, paul took us to the airport got there no real issues i guess and then flew over and arrived in turin where we were met by my friend pierre luigi now pierre luigi is a guy that i um, walked with for a while and met on uh, el camino de santiago and we we walked together um for a period quite close to the end so we we were in santiago itself together and he's a very spiritual guy and he's a guy that i'm in regular contact with but wanted to meet up again of course in person and he comes well he doesn't come from around here he is a roman so he comes from rome but he has an apartment in turin he works in a bank and he also has the house where i am now in the village and uh, he he lives here with um, his partner who is actually from this village but was brought up in Turin. so there we are um he drove us from uh, the airport uh, turin uh, is a large industrial city because most people know it because uh fiat have their factory there and it basically it's a city centered around fiat um, other famous things about Turin is it's got two famous football clubs, Torino, which is the Italian name for Turin, and the far more famous Juventus, who uh, are probably the most successful football club in Italy. And um, what less people will be aware of, they wear black and white stripes because um, they were inspired by Knox County, who were the oldest football club in the uh, in the world, or at least the oldest league club. And uh, so um, they inspired Juventus, were far less successful than Juventus, though. Um, but anyway, so that's that. And we, we drove on the Turin Ring Road, it's all very flat. And um, one point of interest is uh, away from the town on, on, a, on a, a mountain, on a hill, there's a large church. Apparently it's called Superga. I think it was a monastery at one time. You can get up to it by a little tram. But it's also famous because in the 1950s, there was a plane crash there. And all the Torino team who were very successful at the time died. Um, a little bit, I guess, like the Manchester United Munich air crash. And uh, so it's a site that's well known to all Italians, particularly football lovers. And we continued on and we passed uh, away from the flatlands and into um, more rolling and hilly countryside. And that's where uh, this village is. It's called Cisterna. Asti, uh, so Cisterna is the same meaning as system in England, in English, and Asti is the name of this little region, so it's the system of Asti, there's probably other Cisternas elsewhere, and it's this uh, ancient village uh, centred around a castle on the top of the hill, so I think it's a 12th century castle, they're much rebuilt, and um, Pierre Luigi has this gorgeous house here. I mean, this room is amazing. This is what the old part of the house is, 19th century. There's a newer part as well, and this garden. And we just sat and chilled out and relaxed. And um, you know, I introduced him to Thomas, and um, he introduced me to his girlfriend. And do you know what? What's her name? He's told me like hundreds of times. I'm awful with names, but she's very nice. Uh, very well traveled. Lived all over the world. Um, working in construction she lived in canada for a while lived in uh, algeria for a while and uh, various other places so that's that uh, so last night it was just really nice really relaxed we went out to a nearby town called canale uh, canal um and we went to a, a restaurant called ray arthur king arthur is what it means and we had uh, a, a wonderful meal um pizza but also a very nice starter and i tried I think it was the first time in my life i tried steak tartar which is raw meat and it, it looks and sounds disgusting but you know it's ever so nice and uh, they told me a bit about how it's prepared you have to cut it with a knife a knife you can't put it through a mincer because that keeps the uh, sinews of the meat and they it seemed to be um have lemon in it and i think that kills anything that 
could make you ill, which of course eating raw meat normally would. And I remember years ago when I was in uh, Japan, I went to a raw chicken restaurant, which sounds disgusting as well, but it was fantastic. So much so I went back. Um, and that also, I think they said they had to treat it with lemon to kill any potential sicknesses. So there we are. That was last night. We spent last night in the, in the garden just chilling out. It was wonderful. Uh, this morning I woke up, uh, Pierre Luigi and um, his girlfriend, they are they're working from home at the moment. They had a car crash a few weeks ago, so they're not in the best of shape. Um, so whilst they worked from home, uh, I went out and, uh, well, Thomas went for a jog in the morning. But I went for a walk around the, around the village. Uh, gorgeous, absolutely. You know, it is picture postcard stuff, uh, so much so that I bought a picture postcard. Um, but uh, alas, the, the main church was closed and the castle's closed. It's closed until Thursday, so I might not get into it. Um, but it was nice just wandering around and of course it reminded me a little bit of uh, some of those uh, villages that I went to, um, you know, when I was walking uh, only a few months ago through um, uh, Tuscany. And actually this region isn't that dissimilar to Tuscany. It's, it's quite interesting in that way, but it doesn't have, it has a fraction of the tourists of Tuscany. And we were talking about this and I think one of the main reasons is, is that you know, yes, the countryside is similar. But with Tuscany, you've got the cities with all those fantastic artworks and that, and you don't have those draw cards to bring people here. Um, anyway, that was that. Um, following uh, that, when, you know, after about lunchtime, we went off in the car, and we went to a place called... Bologna, I think. So that was the name of the small region where they produce some of the best wine in the world, apparently. It's only 50 to 100 euros a bottle. And uh, we went, but that's several villages. There is one, I think, called Bologna. But we went to one called uh, La Mora. And we had, we had a, a talk about this because uh, where did the name come from? And one of the um, theories is that the name comes from the... Um, the, like the Arab invasions and that more settled there and they did invade this part so it could be but there was also another theory that there is a game that kids play a bit like um, paper, scissors, stone but involving numbers called Mora and so you know we, we I'd, I'd like to know what the truth is but yeah we had a look around there really nice perfect picture perfect place it's the highest of the villages so we looked out over this amazing panorama of the whole wine producing region vineyards as far as the eye could see and then we went to a place and we had our lunch which was basically like merze you know some cooked meats and some cheeses absolutely wonderful with honey and chutney and a glass of um, uh, Wallona wine uh, which, uh, it's red wine by the way and then we went to the city of Alba not a very big city it's a Roman city so it's built on the grid plan that the Romans always use but it is a uh, world famous for truffles. Now, I don't know anything about truffles, but apparently um, truffles, they um, there are white ones and black ones, and the, I think the most prized are the white ones, but they're only in winter, and Alba has a huge truffle festival. I think it's every like October, November time. But in the summer, there are black truffles. So we saw these black truffles. We've actually bought one. We're going to try it later. And the thing is with truffles, it's not so much about the taste as the smell. And we did smell this truffle, and it's not what you'd expect. It's it's not like earthy at all. It, it, it's quite fragrant. It, it's hard to describe, but it smells nice. And um, so, yeah, that's something I've not tried before. Um, but we wandered around the streets. I noticed a couple of things. It was a very nice flashy steer school, a rationalist building. That was very nice. Went into a, a church, um, Mary Magdalene, I think that was um, a monastery church. So there was, you know, a whole area fenced off where the Dominican nuns used to be. Um, went, uh, had a coffee near a building with these nice tiles around it of jesters and fools. And probably the tiles from 15th century. And it also, it had got these towers everywhere, these medieval towers, which, you know, I remember seeing them. Um, in uh, the Zeffirelli Roma in Juliet and in um, the um, a Brother Sun Sister Moon as well. So they're, they're a feature of parts of Italy. So that's that. Uh, we've come back now.
we're in the house, relaxing for an hour or so before we head off uh, for our evening meal. So perhaps it's going to be Piemonte's uh, local specialities in the, in the village. And uh, wash down with more wine, I think. So that's me, Uncle Traveling Matt from Italy, telling you, keep traveling.